After 60 days in darkness, they can finally crawl into the daylight. Above ground, they pick through the rubble, the remains of their place of refuge. They've lived in a maze of tunnels below this vast steel plant for weeks, the only way to survive the Russian bombardment. Svetislav was six months old yesterday. Nearly half his life has been underground. Supplies have been cut off for weeks. The children were hungry, this woman says. More than a hundred people have been allowed to leave. Their horror is over for now. I can't believe it. Two months of darkness. When we were in the bus, I told my husband, we won't have to go to the toilet with a torch and use a bag as a loo. <laughs> the Azovstal steel plant is one of the biggest in the world. A unit of Ukrainian fighters has tried to hold on to the site as this once vibrant European city was pounded by the Russians. Civilians took shelter underground alongside them, but the bombing was relentless. The Azov group claimed that even their hospital was targeted. But now there is a glimmer of hope. It will be a tense wait to see if more will make it out of this city alive. Around 100 civilians are expected here in Zaporizhia tomorrow, but there are hundreds more still trapped within the steelworks. And there are thought to be 100,000 people within the city of Mariupol itself. That gives you an idea of the scale of the operation still to come. Talks are underway, but I'm told those negotiations are delicate, tense and complicated. Everyone wants to see this succeed. Laura Bicker, BBC News, Zaporizhia.